In the last three weeks, we've talked to the sailing experts J.T. Holden, Laurent the Legend and Bob Ross from Leopard Catamarans. But in this episode, we show you our struggle with bureaucracy, legalities, insurance and warranties and the must-dos to protect your boat before you go off sailing. This is the end of another day on the boat. You buy a new boat, you want to go sailing, but there is so much to do. The interesting thing is, you know, it's not just, you don't just buy the boat and sail away. I have to get the boat registered, and because we're from Australia, I have to get Australian registration. So I go online to do the Australian registration, I have a bill of sale, I have the manufacturer's document with the details, but to register the boat, I need a radio call sign. So I go on to the ACMA ACMA site, which is the Australian Communications Maritime whatever site. To get a call sign, I need a registration number. I can't get a registration number until I have a call sign. I can't get a call sign until I have a registration number. So where do you go? Except in circles. So quite frustrating. So I've sent emails off to both of them with the applications for the the um, call sign first because that's a little bit less complicated and a little bit cheaper and if they reject it obviously I haven't lost one and a half thousand dollars. It's kind of like you have to go online get all these documents to do the registration there's like three or four documents I have to fill in, have to sign and I have to mail them. I have to mail them off to Australia. Can you imagine how long is that going to take? But quite a frustrating slow and painful process. All these things which you think you should just buy the boat and sail off into the sunset well we're still moored up in the marina looking at the sunset and dreaming dreaming about the Bahamas so, <laughs> so that's what we've been doing paperwork documentation we've been sorting out the Florida licensing as well we've got to get a license to be here for in uh, Florida waters we've we've only taken it out for 90 days as the minimum so yeah, we've paid US tax, we've got the notary of sale, all these little kind of really boring bits of but paper, but important. So extremely important, important because and this of course, is Bob, Bob, our broker, keeps on saying, now this is really, really, really important that you do this. Oh yeah, and the things <laughs> I haven't even started yet is the warranty stuff, so I have to send off the warranty papers for the two Yanmai engines, I have to send off the warranty papers for the Ray Marine Electronics and I have to send off the, the paperwork for the warranty on the Northern Lights genset. So all those things have to be done as well and I haven't even got to that yet. Today we have been, have I know, la 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 la. Work is not what you want to do but it's what you have to do. A bit like passports, so you've got to get all the paperwork right Otherwise, you have really major significant problems down the track. So, but so worth it. <laughs> will be, and we look forward to that payback. Okay, see so you guys. Just wanted to go through the the process of registering the boat to get into our name under an Australian flag. And the first form is an application for registration, which is two-page document which is not too bad and then the second form is we have to have a registered agent the agent is a person who is actually responsible for operating the boat so that's obviously me the owner of the boat has to sign it so obviously that's me it's not a problem but I had to have a witness so I used Elizabeth the third form is a declaration of ownership and nationality so to register in Australia obviously the Australians require you to be an Australian by the sounds of things um, and that had to be signed by both Elizabeth and me and we had to have that witness so we got Isabel from Leopard Catamarans to counter sign that as a witness. The most important document to register a boat and to do anything in fact take a boat anywhere is to have a bill of sale. We got the bill of sale from Leopard Catamarans and the Australians require an original. 
all of these documents have to be sent off to Australia because it's got the um, notary stamp at the bottom and the original signatures. All of these documents have to be sent and by mail to Australia before the boat can be registered. So that's probably the biggest challenge we have. They then send us a marking document so we have to put markings on the boat to suit their standards we have to send them back a form saying we've done those markings to their standards and then they register the boat so this is kind of a bit of a three-step process here we send it they send us back a marking document we then send uh, an acknowledgement that we've marked the boat to their satisfaction and then they send us the registration but because we're in the USA obviously this is all being done by mail um, so that I suspect this is going to take a bit of time the other things we had to do is obviously pay for the registration process the fee in Australian dollars is $1,554 and the other really important document the manufacturer's statement of origin this is a really important document too because this has all of the numbers the boat the hull number and the Yanmar numbers, the exact measurements of the boat, the horsepower ridge, the numbers of the engines, the gearbox numbers even. Those are all the documents we need to send off to AMSA, the Australian Maritime Safety Authority, to register Ultra Dash as an Australian boat. We had a really good experience with a very efficient chap in AMSA because I sent them an email saying what do we do about do you need the paper copies and he sent a really good email back the same day and then called me uh, within 24 hours to discuss how to do it. Yeah. I'd hate to send all the information all the way around in paper form to Australia and find out of Mr. Form. Okay. Sort of hassle. Yep. Okay. Um, so look, that's, oh, that's really very helpful, so thanks very much. Now what about the issue of the call sign not being ready before the... Um, okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Allowing for postal times from the US to Australia like the actual turnaround time at your end, is that like a few weeks or a few months? Oh, okay, so pretty quick. That's excellent. I appreciate the call because, um, yeah, I mean, I only sent the email off earlier today. So that's yeah, wa wonderful no service. Thank you very much for that. Okay, look, thanks very much. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't believe how wonderful your service is, actually. That's fantastic. <laughs> Okay, excellent. No, well, you've you've uh, surpassed yourself. No, that's fantastic. Thanks very much. That's wonderful. Thanks a lot. Bye. Wow. So what he suggested I do is send him email the the copies of all of these documents so he can confirm that the documents are correct before I send them by mail. So that is just phenomenal service. So thank you very much, Paul. You've done a great job, and I think you should get a bonus from AMSA. Okay, so having got the telephone call sorted from AMSA, um, and as I say, very grateful to, for their service, we emailed all the forms off to AMSA, um, and we got, came back with errors that we had to correct. We corrected them, they were very fine detail stuff, like the uh, length of the boat couldn't be 15.4 meters, it had to be written as 15.40 meters, and things like that. Um, Elizabeth couldn't countersign because she was countersign to witness my documents because she was a co-owner and there were um, one of the boxes uh, also had to have my occupation so it wasn't just my name but my name and my occupation. Another, another error was the builder certificate that we got from Robertson and Kane was not adequate for AMS's requirements because it did not have a description of the boat. Now a description of the boat is like this is a, a twin hulled catamaran fiberglass white with transom hung rudders or 
terms like that. And so I had to write a separate affidavit with the description of the boat. We sent the emails off to them and they came back three times. On the third time we got it right, they said this is fine, send us all the documents, we put them in registered mail, mailed them back to Australia. Uh, yeah, about a month later we got back a marking note which required us to put signage um, in various places of various sizes, plus the main beam had to be inscribed with the with the boat's number. Once this was done we signed the form which again witnessed to say that that had all been done to their standards and then we had to mail that off again. Mailing obviously they wanted the original form so that got mailed off to Australia again and about a month later they sent the documents to my address which was in Australia obviously. By the time that was all done and completed we had sailed off to the Bahamas. So we did not have our registration documents with us when we were traveling, which we were told would be fine because in the Bahamas they just need the bill of sale. And that's why I said earlier, the bill of sale is a really important document. It's your proof that you've purchased the boat. Um, so always keep the original of that document and make sure you have it uh, when you uh, travel with your boat. Obviously, once you get the registration document, that is your proof, but the bill of sale uh, works until that time, or so we were told. Let's get into the detail about the warranties for these different uh, products that you're going to get with any new boat okay uh, this was a big surprise for us and uh, both in terms of how complex it was and how long it took us there was three main things that um, Bob Ross said absolutely these things have to be you have to make sure you get the warranties registered for these things and that was the uh, all the Raymarine electronic equipment the the Yanmar engines and sail drives etc and also the Northern Lights generator the Northern Lights is obviously just one device. It actually was relatively quick and relatively easy. Um, we did go into the wrong Northern Lights website, which turned out to be selling LED lights for spas or something peculiar like that. So that delayed us a little bit, but our fault there. With the Northern Lights, they also had a paper registration. So because we weren't that confident with the effectiveness of the online warranty registration we deliberately sent off the paper registration as well. So let's do the Yanmar warranties first because with the Yanmar warranties obviously you've got two engines and you've got two gearboxes, the sail drives, that sort of stuff so all of those have to be registered. Now each of those has a number uh, to get into the Yanmar website you have to register your boat which then allows you to register what engines you've got and you've got to put the numbers in of the um, of the actual specific engines and gearboxes and sail drives. Um, this should be in my view should be really simple and really obvious but you get in and you put in you know um, 80 horsepower GM whatever it is and they give you a choice of 500 pages oh, of engine numbers and you've got to find your number. Now this wasted us so much time we put in the part number we put in the serial number and we never found that our actual engine listed easily we had to manually go through a lot of these pages manually to find the right numbers for our engine pan the backside major pan the backside additionally with the both the Yanma and the Ray Marine websites we obviously got to log in you create a password you then do it for a few hours you go away you have a cup of coffee you come back you put in your password and it doesn't work so get a new password create a new password it says password accepted you go back in still didn't work uh, we've had that problem subsequently as well where we can't get back in to find the numbers for these engines from memory the trick is you don't just put in the part number and the serial number but you've got to do all the whole number together and you've got to put it in a certain way and sometimes they include the hyphens and sometimes they don't include the hyphens going on to the ray marine there are lots of lots of devices with the ray marine stuff so we had about 27 different items we had to enter and initially it was really really slow because we had the same problem but once we realized that you had to put in both the part number and the serial number together it then started recognizing uh, the 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 parts and accepting them but 
that took us ages. When you have uh, uploaded all the documents and got it, they do send you a, a form which says here are your devices that you've registered and, and certainly file that. I'd recommend very strongly to make sure you file those in a, in a folder on your computer save them all because you're going to need them you're going to forget your password or the password's not going to work you may have to phone a brain marine anyway um, it's a painful long process good luck with it and if you can't be bothered with the bureaucratic nonsense and you're not good with computers one of the options is to pay somebody to do it and and the captains in Fort Lauderdale certainly have that ability and are willing to do that for you not sure what they charge and we'll give you the name of Chris Chris is another captain in Fort Lauderdale and I know he does this and I'm sure Calvin would be able to do it as well so I'll leave Calvin and Chris's names and their telephone numbers there if you do want to use those guys to do your warranty work there were also a variety of other small items that we had to get warranties for. So obviously much less critical than these three big items that obviously took the time and were important. There's obviously um, a lot to do with the warranties and this isn't just about buying the boat and sailing it away guys. I'm afraid that's the bad news. You have to register these warranties to make sure that you are covered when the time arises and you need that cover. Uh, the other issue that I suppose you really should be aware of is the trouble I've had getting the boat insured uh, for the Bahamas and the Caribbean. The issue we have is I'm not, a, I'm not American, so all of the American companies will not insure me at all, it seems. The insurance company that I have been using in Australia for Alberdash previously was Pantaneous, great company. The only problem when I sent off to Pantaneous to insure Ultradash their issue was that they do no, they no longer cover name storms in the Caribbean at all. It's raining, you might be able to hear the rain on the roof. Um, this is the end of the summer in Fort Lauderdale, so we have a bit of um, squalls coming through and still a bit of humidity. Um, it's just the very end of the summer and hopefully these will stop before we go to the Bahamas. Okay, so I probably sent off applications for insurance to six or seven different agents and companies um, I got one office I got an offer from Pantaneous who was offering me insurance without a name storm cover I'm not really comfortable with that but I must say for a while I thought I was going to have to accept that that I wouldn't have insurance if there was a name storm because I, I, up until yesterday I had no other um, offers of um, of insurance to cover name storms. Um, yesterday I got uh, uh, an email offering me insurance finally um, from uh, Blue Water Insurance and so absolutely great they've given me a price I'm filling out the forms today I'm going to send them off I need to make some adjustments to the forms to have them understand the different gear that we've got on the boat um, the price may go up a bit as the solar panels and the internet dome and all those extras are covered but certainly this is very good because I was significantly concerned about what we were going to do for insurance to allow us to have name storm cover that's the story for now it's been quite a journey because it's been two full weeks that I've been chasing up insurance companies getting rejection after rejection after rejection which is very frustrating but there's light at the end of the tunnel and we'll keep you informed guys the other interesting bureaucratic challenge we had was in relation to buying our AIS um, and getting that registered as well because to buy an AIS you need an MMSI which is a marine mobile service identity or um, something like that. We couldn't buy an AIS from Ray Marine until we had that number. When I tried to get that number the um, Australian Communications Authority again very generously and repeatedly said well you, you need to tell us the number of your AIS before we can give you an M MMSI number. So here we have again this dichotomy of problems where they're not going to give it to you until you have the number, they're not going to give you the number until you have the device. Fortunately Just Catamarans came to our assistance here because they could get access to these devices without the numbers. So they got the devices, I then 
applied for the number and Rafa at Just Catamarans programmed the AIS with my MMSI number. So another problem solved, but not as simple as really you think it should be. Okay guys, so we've just had this little bit of an issue with our EPIRB. We bought the EPIRB in the USA and unfortunately that means it was programmed as being a USA flag vessel which meant that we had to take this brand new EPIRB and get it reprogrammed. We had some difficulty finding a place that could do it in a relatively short time and eventually we found this place, Inflatable Services 84 Boat Works. They sell inflatables and do obviously quite a lot of electronics but they did this for us in a number of hours. So we took it in at about 11 o'clock in the morning, 11.30 it was actually and they had it back to us at 2.30 in the afternoon. Wonderful service, relatively cheap price as well, cheaper than the other people that weren't there. So good on them but it's taken a huge um, weight off my mind because now I can register this to the boat and actually be legal. Um, you are legally obligated to uh, register these things with your, your country of residence so that if it goes off they know who you are and they know where, you know where you're from and how to contact the relatives. So this was a legal obligation that we were meant to comply with and I was getting worried we wouldn't be able to get it done before we left. But now it's done, big sigh of relief. Thanks guys, you've done a wonderful job. They were absolutely fantastic. So let's get on with the rest of our jobs. The other thing I didn't show you, they also give you a certificate saying that it's been reprogrammed and the number, blah, blah, blah. Well, I've been working very hard on my list. So crossing who's been good out. and who's been bad <laughs> checking it twice <laughs> it is a season <laughs> but no i've been i've been actually marking off lots of things off the list so that brings that me great joy completed mm -hmm. okay let's get on with that next place walmart on on i'm slipping away so don't let me go hi folks look this episode we've just uh, shared with you has been really stressful. It's a really stressful process. part of the process of buying a boat. But fortunately for us, we were able to keep our stress levels in check. And why was that? Well, we use a process called positive mindfulness, which really teaches people to recognize negative thoughts and control them and replace them with positive alternatives. This allows you to really avoid getting yourself into that automatic cycle of escalating um, anxiety, panic, uh, fear, PTSD and all of those conditions are very effectively controlled by using these processes. So uh, we are going to share them with everybody and this is free. Uh, there's a video that will... That's right, it's for free. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, um, it'll go through the whole process from the beginning and allow you to uh, learn exactly what to do if you ever get stressed and within three minutes, this is a three minute process, you can control your stress anywhere, anytime with great success. It's quite phenomenal and it we is. really want to share it with you guys. So if you if this is something that you think you would like benefit to from. benefit from or whatever, uh, watch the end of the video and then there'll be an obvious sign or, or uh, something to click. Or, and, in the, or in the links below. And that'll take you straight there so you can get your stress um, under, under control. control as quickly as possible. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed the videos and we'll see you next time. All the best. Bye. If you have liked this episode, hit the like button, subscribe for free and ding the dong so you don't miss your fix of the next exciting episode. Love and health from the Barefoot Doctors. Love is